And here we have him, Ricky Nixon. How are you, mate? Thanks, boys. Pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure doing this. So thanks for joining the Jumper Punch. Jumper Punch. You must have. I uh, thought it was always just an. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Chicken goes bang. (laughs) Chicken goes two two. -two -two. I love it. I love it. So we are getting the best of the forty eights. Yeah. So you're well, the only one we could find. So yeah. Yeah, probably the only one that's ever played. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a few. There's yeah. a few. There's yeah. a few. But you played like four fantastic games. Do <laughs> you remember them? Well, I actually remember. Um, you know, certainly Robbie Flower is one of the greatest players of all time. And 100%. I played my first game on him, and I thought I played pretty well. I kept him to 43 possessions. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, uh, no, but the biggest thing that came out of that game for me was um, he was doing things like this. Like uh, when they bounced the ball, it actually went straight to centre forward. I ran past, I think, McClure at the time. Yamble took me. I ran into an open goal in the first 30 seconds of my career yeah. and got dumped into the ground before <laughs> my foot. And, and Robbie Flower went back to me and goes, yeah, Rick, what you got to do is, mate, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to run over to here. And I thought, wow. Oh, did he? Who would do that these days? Wow. No, you, you wouldn't see a player like really? Matt Fife telling Patrick Cripps where to run or something nah, like that. No, no way. No. Yeah, it was just an amazing era of football, that, that sort of early 80s. And I think probably mid nineties was probably when the best footy probably was. You know, I think so. Eighties yeah. and nineties for, for yeah. the for the young blokes, they don't get it. The eighties <laughs> and nineties no, was the best. It was the best. So let's go back quickly. <laughs> How did you start playing footy? Like when when did you start? Did you always yeah. play footy? No, it was a great story. Uh, Tony Southcombe who played at Carlton. Uh, people mightn't remember him. Best footballer I've ever seen came yep. from Golden Square in Bendigo, where that, Diesel yeah. Williams and I grew up. Played in glasses though, and they told him he was he had to not wear yeah. them because they were dangerous. Yeah. Funny how now Mason Cox can wear them yeah. in 2022, <laughs> but Tony yeah. Southcombe couldn't in 1982. Yeah. Um, he got Greg Williams and I to run up this famous hill, One Tree Hill, um, four I've kilometres at top. Yeah. And yeah, I, I was a little athletics champ, so ran up ran up at the first day. It took Diesel 28 days to get <laughs> to the top. And he, but he did change my life at that stage. He said uh, when he got to the top, I said, "Well done, Greg," and he said. Rick, why do you always run to the top? I said, well, that's where Tony told us to run to. And he goes, you're better than that. The next day I went up the hill, nine kilometres around the bush tracks back to my parents' house, did it for 18 months, and they picked me ahead of Diesel Williams. Yes. And that's when Carlton went wrong. They, they, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but when I got, came down for my first meeting, Shane O'Sullivan recruited me. It was zoning back then. Yep. And, um, From Bendigo? Yeah, and yep. David Parkin was the coach. And they said, look, come to Carlton at 12 o'clock. We're going to have lunch with you, introduce you to everyone, run, run, run. I drove my EH <laughs> station wagon down with all my clothes oh, no. and everything. I just had an EH. My first car was an EH. <laughs> Yeah, four hundred dollars it cost me. And um, we've gone upstairs, and, and the Carlton Social Club or cafe it was very popular back in those days. So I'm with Shane and David, and the waitress came over and they said, "Look, Rick, what would you like?" And I went, um, "I'll have a steak." And she goes, "How would you like that?" And I went, uh, "On a plate." Like <laughs> and David Parker turned around to Shane O'Sullivan and said, "We've got a bit of work to do here." <laughs> Got better. I went down to my car and guess what? All the clothes have been stolen and everything. Did and, and David Park goes, "Did you lock your car?" And I said, "You have to do that." Yeah. You have to lock your car in video. <laughs> that's uh, so real. So really, on. your clothes got stolen. So that's where my life's oh. always eventful. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it was great years back. Like you know, you in the reserves were names like Southby, Keo, Ashley, you know, Harms. In the reserves, oh, like no. these days, you're lucky if any club's got four good players. Sort and of they would have been like or, all yeah. triple premiership players. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. Yeah, and you would have been. Were you? But they also you... taught you how to play. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, good contested one on one footy back in yeah, those yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, look, I, I, now even when I look back, my best mates are from Carlton that era. Yeah. Um, business contacts that I've made over the years, like what John Elliott did for me when I started in player management. You know, he he, he said I'll send you to America and pay for it all. That's ten right, grand. I didn't say that. And I didn't end up going, but you know the fact he said it backed me in because I taught his kids at Kerry Grammar. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, he he was an amazing character in Carlton mm-hmm. days, and you know. Something Inspired we people lack. like me, yeah. We yeah. lack now. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah we so. do lack characters, you know. I do a lot of stuff with Dane Swan most weekends. Yes. And he's probably the last character to have played the game mm. a little bit, although I was with one on the weekend, Jason Ackermanis. He's a bit of a character. He's a bit of a character. <laughs> yeah. 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 So coming into Carlton, and you sort of spoke about it then, like the, the contacts and what they do for you. Like how, I think, how was it like, because we've obviously spoke, you know, I spoke to Alex Marku yeah. and, and Harmsy and the boys. They said that the club was... It was just so tight in it, and there was just like this camaraderie. What was it like when you first got there? Well, when I got there, I'll never forget, um, I think it was Jeff Southby who said, you've got to come to lunch at Danini's on Fridays. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it's yes, $10, yes, yes. which is like 
10,000 these days. <laughs> 10 dollars for all you can eat. And I'm like, oh, look, I haven't got time. And he goes, no, no, you have to come. I said, I've got university, you know, I was studying to be a teacher. And I didn't realise until recently, or it's five years ago when I wrote a book, what that did for you was you got to know Wow Jones, you got to know Rod mm. Keogh, you got to know them, yeah. and that bond that they had when they played, yeah. and they drink all together all the time. Yeah. You do everything together. 100%. And I know that Max Gorn, who you know is he's a ripper bloke, Max Gorn, <laughs> he, he's worked hard to get Melbourne like to that, the where, where, yeah. they're, where they're mm. actually matured into a group that bonds together, and yeah. you know that, that makes a massive difference. I think it does, and I yeah. think that bond outside definitely, as you said, it, it brings onto the field. Yep. And so when you are um, doing those one percenters and that, you're doing it for mates, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like you, it's hard to explain, but it's like a love. You're in love with your wife or your girlfriend or something like that, but you know, you're in love with your teammates back in those yeah, days. Yeah, and you know, someone like Bruce, every Thursday night, we used to have a practice match. Now, you wouldn't do that these days where you're tackling and yeah. everything else. And, and Parkin used to make me play on Bruce Duel all the oh. time. So I learned pretty quickly. Did you ever to get, get a, a possession? Kick. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, you know, he would, he, like what I learned from playing on him, you know, sort of thing, he, he was an amazing person. And I'll never forget, we walked out to the car park after training one day and he said, Rick, just out of interest, what, how much are you getting paid? And this is one of my biggest mistakes of my life. I said, I'm getting 15 grand. And he goes, 15 grand? <laughs> I go, what? how much are you getting? He goes, I'm only getting nine grand. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 18 and uh, and, uh, and hadn't played a game probably. <laughs> That's wow. Nice. Yeah, but they uh, put me, like, you know, Carlton in those days, um, what clubs would do for you, they put me through university, which my yep. parents mm. probably couldn't even afford. Yep. And, um, you know, uh, Things like that, little things, I suppose, you know. Well, that's huge, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, That was huge. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Especially for later on in your... Yeah, and I think um, zoning's what's missed, you know, because you created a bond with... Like, I buried for St Kilda yes. as a kid, but I, all I wanted to do was play for Carlton. That's, yeah. That was your ambition in life because it was your zone in Bendigo. Yeah. And if you look back, how many good players they got out of Bendigo. Some good players um, are. Even Peter McConville, people, you know, yeah. he doesn't probably get the recognition sometimes He's he deserves. Star. Absolute He's star, star. Three, three premierships, yeah. you know, players like that. And... Uh, there's even been Dustin Munn, he was on Castle Main, but just out of Bendigo yeah. sort of thing. A lot of good players have come from up that area. 100%. Yeah. So when, go, 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 Rocket, don't you? No, I was <laughs> going to say, so you get over to Carl and you get recruited yep. in front of Greg Williams. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's I never stay. let you. He keeps on going, he's won Brownlow. <laughs> and he, when, he, when he got introduced to, yeah, put it, inducted into the Hall of Fame in Bendigo, he invited me up and everything. I thought, oh, this is going to be good, you know. Uh, the little guy realised he invited me up for one reason only. When he got on the stage, the MCC, then what was your motivation, Greg? Because you got the arse from Carlton four times. Or you didn't get picked, sorry. Yeah, yeah that's right. You wrote a letter to Tom Hafey and he rookied you. And you know, yeah. he goes, look, there's no bigger motivation in life when your best mate, Ricky Nixon, gets a game ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole crowd laughed except me. <laughs> That's uh, it. You know, he's, uh, actually, the AFL rang me once and said, we've got some good and bad news for you. I said, what's, what's the good news? They said, we're putting you in the Hall of Fame. I went, oh, well, that's all right. You know, how come? They said, well, that's the bad news. You've got the longest career for the least oh, amount of yes. games. Yes. Which I just saw just got broken recently. Well, I'm now ranked I fourth. I'm fourth or something now. Oh, well, it depends really? how you analyse it. I think the player, okay. who, I don't even think who it was, he's played 10 years for 50 games or something. Oh, but okay. I played 11 years for 63. I think, and the Rhino was just behind you. Yeah, he was he was ten years for sixty two yeah, games. That's so right. So it depends that's how you. I mean, yeah, it doesn't that's make any right. difference. But I was just lucky, uh, unlucky, and lucky that you know I was sixty nine kilos playing in the eighties yeah. against one hundred and twenty kilo blokes. Yeah. So I had broken ankle, yeah, broken nerves. Yeah, had a big kick about. You. I mean, I, well, was, I was in goal of the year twice, mark of the year twice, and on. the second longest kick in AFL history. Yeah, that's right. Which was eighty five meters, I think, at Moorabbin one day. Oh and really? Yeah, landed in the centre circle from a talk. <laughs> And I was kicking into a six goal brace too. You play your first game. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes, I do, because it was uh, Wayne Harms' uh, I mightn't get it right, 200th, and I think it was Bruce Stool's 300. It was Bruce Stool's 300. And um, we lost to Melbourne, which we weren't expected to lose. Oh. So my career lasted one game and I got the arse the week after again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, though it was uh, uh, those players were you know instrumental in Carlton premierships. That's for sure. They were yeah, indeed. So your career, I mean, in, like you spoke about sort of Carlton and St Kilda, you were part of that. You went from Carlton then to the yep. Saints. How did how did sort of the end at Carlton come up, and how did the start of St Kilda come? Because we had Carlton yeah. had a few players yeah. that shifted over to the yeah. Saints in those days. Yeah, they did. There was sort of seven players. Well, Jezza yeah. went there as a coach early days, but then yeah. Wow Jones, Peter McConville, all best mates with me. Yeah, Spiro Corkamilis, yeah, you know, Ian Muller, who I used to live with, 
people forget how good a player he was, but yeah. he did. He had two knee reconstructions, which in those days there was no it's comeback all over, sort that's of it. thing. Yeah, yeah. But um, the reason I went there was uh, David Parkin unexpectedly got the flick in October 1984, I think, and Robert Walls came in. I'd done a deal with Parkin that I was going overseas um, for and a month. Not. And he said, that's fine, Rick, as long as you're back in November. When yeah. Robert Walls came in, he said, mate, I'm the new coach. You're not going overseas. And I said, um, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, then I wa- and then, of course, that didn't work for me because I, wanted to go- I went and trained at Essendon. Yep. They wouldn't, because well, they cleared you back in those days. Yeah, you couldn't right. just go. And I went and trained at Collingwood, I trained at Geelong, and they all wanted me. And, um, and they said, they, oh, we're only clearing you to one club, and that's the Wooden Spooner, St Kilda. Yeah. Yeah. It was the team that you used to bang for St Kilda. Yeah, I did. And Trevor Barker was my idol growing yeah. up, you know. And, and look, when I started in play management, I'll never forget, he said, Rick, um, I said, how much if you do a sports night and stuff like that? I want to try and get you out there. He said, mate, I'm going to do it for nothing. I said, for nothing? He goes, you, you keep the money and you set yourself up. I want to help you set it. I went, wow. Him and Crackers wow. Keenan and Sam Newman, mm. those three people, yeah. all did the same for me. Wow. And, you know, it, sometimes you need a bit of luck, I suppose. or support just to get Because in an industry that didn't exist, it wasn't yeah, easy to start exactly. with. But it gets easier when you sign Gary Ablett and Wayne Carey and mm. likes like that. You wow. know, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, the big... Uh, so what, what was the name... Club Club Ten. Club Ten. Yeah. That's right. Was it sponsored by Mighty Ten? Yeah. What it was was uh, people thought it was ten players, but it was actually eleven was originally. Runner, yeah. And then because the AFL set up Craig Kelly in opposition to me, and they started Pro Squad, which was the B graders. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, uh, well, it was. Yeah. Man. <laughs> but I had on my books outside Club Ten. I had um, uh, a kid called Ben Cousins who was killing. Oh, he was all right. Um, Michael Voss who was going. Yeah, right. He was pretty good. Yeah. Um, Mark Rashudo, who people probably yeah, don't yeah. give the credibility to the nah, great, Mark player, too. Was a great Mark player too. Mark yeah. Rashudo. Yeah. And there was one yeah. other. I can't think James who it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, James Hurd. Yeah. yeah. Oh, James and then James. I had even players of the ilk of Corey McKernan left my management because he. thought he reckons I favoured Wayne Carey, and I said that's true. Yeah, you yeah. And, um, and, uh, Matthew Lloyd did the same, and I get on great with Corey and yeah. Matthew now. And, and, but you can understand back in those days, you know, mm. other managers were trying to spring up; they'd offer them something. Yeah, you know, we'll do it for free or something like yeah. that. So. But it was exciting times, and you know, next year, touch wood, I'm, I haven't signed off on it yet, but there's going to be a. A movie done or something on me and um, yeah, yeah, the, the exclusive, the exclusive on the jumper on party. The jumper party. It's going to come out of me. Oh God, I went into a pub on Sunday <laughs> and the whole pub at Michael Gardner was there. Uh, the ex and killed West Coast boys. He's walking. He's on chicken. <laughs> <laughs> The whole pub erupted. It's, like, <laughs> it's funny how like there was little things in my life where we were talking about before the cleaner, how I refer yeah, to oh, a girl really? I was seeing as a cleaner, and the next day a horse ran called the cleaner, and yeah. every, I tell everyone back and it's going to win. It was forty to one and it won. Yeah. And this this horse, the cleaner, became very famous. And then mm. another Choo-choo. day, Choo-choo. yeah. But then on Choo-choo. Twitter one day, someone said because my nickname is Chicken, which I'll quick. It's a Carlton story. I'll quickly tell you. Yeah. We um, finished Sunday training one day. We used to go to the Chevron till seven in the morning, and then nice. go to training at eight o'clock, all pissed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then after training, we go in the trainer's room and have beers. And Wow Jones ordered 48 hamburgers with a lot. And when they came, I'm eating mine with a knife and fork. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm eating my hamburger. He goes, you don't need a hamburger with a knife and fork. I said, you do when you've got chicken lips. <laughs> <laughs> he, called, he called me chicken lips. And then the lips got dropped after about four weeks. Even my kids chicken. text me at Christmas. Hey, chicken, Merry Christmas, mate. Yeah, yeah, I go, it's yeah. dad, all right? Don't call me chicken. <laughs> But it's one of those names that's just stuck. You it know, has stuck, yeah. I ended up in northern Queensland. I was surprised. Some older ladies are going, now chicken. And I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's Ricky sort of thing. So, yeah, so there's great stories coming to the old And the toot toot? Uh, the toot toot, yeah, sorry, on Twitter, this guy said all aboard the chicken train. And yeah. I said toot oh, toot. And oh my God, the next, what it was, was that week some Kevins <laughs> were playing um, Xavier. And they asked me to do a quick video. And um, I said, you know, this kid can do this and this kid can do this and I think St. Kevin's will win. So everyone get to the game, toot, toot. And then oh, they just went off its body. Yeah, it does, man. Yeah. Especially these days, man. Like- well, social media back 10 years ago when this sort of stuff was happening was all, I don't know, something unique was what made mm. it go. And yeah. my Facebook, I don't know, for some reason I decided to treat it as an entertainment platform. So whatever you do has got to be engaging. And, mm, of course. and you know, look, I've, I, it's actually through your very difficult 10 years financially, Facebook's kept me alive financially because yep. the f- local footy clubs engage with me through Facebook. Yep. And I book a lot of the speaking gigs and, you know, yeah. Dane Swan's played one-off games, Barry Hall, Favola, yep. um, Akamata, all them played mm. one-off games, which is great for local footy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Speaking about, I mean, financially, you've revolutionised basically the player agent market. And how, how did that sort of all, because you were teaching it, you said you were teaching at Kerry Grammar, 
How, how did all that AFL player agency stuff sort of start? What was the seed that was planted yeah. that, that got it all going? Yeah, it's funny you should bring it up. We were talking before about this Saturday night. I'm going to change my speech I do every Saturday night to how I did get into player uh-huh. management and some okay. of the footy stories. And the great one is my dad was a fitter and turner in Bendigo. Okay. And he made me a handball target about, I don't know, 10 foot high out of wood. Yep. I used to have to put it on the top of my car. And anyway, I asked a shopping oh. centre. I said, I'll bring a couple of players out. It cost $400 a three players, so I paid the players a hundred each and kept a hundred. I only realised it was costing me seventy bucks in petrol, and I wasn't making any money. Anyway, uh, what happened was Maya rang and said, "Rick, could you do what? We're opening a new sports uh, thing down the basement. Mm-hmm. Could you get some big players here?" And I, I got Wayne Carey and Gary Abbott Senior. That's probably no. And they said, "If you get five hundred people here, we might do it at a couple of other stores." Guess how many turned up? 5,000 people Jeez. turned up. And they said, Rick, wow. we're going to... What gonna, year was this? This was, uh, I reckon, 94, 95? 95, it would have so been. So at their prime, yeah. that was at their peak. Might right? have even been 96, but yeah, it was at their peak. And um, they, they said, we've got 84 stores around Australia. Can you do them? I go, yeah, yeah, I'll do this all. It's better, they said, uh, it might sound like... A, I, I don't quote me on the exact numbers, but they said, they said look, Rick, it's going to be 84,000 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. 1,000 for each store. Right, 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 right. They sent me a cheque for 180. And I rang the accountant bloke up. I said, mate, you've sent me a cheque for 180. He goes, no, don't worry about it, just keep it. I got a high class. <laughs> Back in checks in those days. So, yeah. yeah, that's how it sort of kicked off. And sorry, so the, how it worked, and it wasn't any genius planning from my end, is I'll never forget I was sitting at home for three days and 92 players, that's the number, signed with me in three days. Jeez. All because I was paying them $100 off of, to do these promotions. No one else wow. was doing it. And a hundred dollars back then was probably the equivalent of a thousand. Yeah. So what was happening is Wayne Carey go to training. Ricky got me a hundred dollars to do Southland Shopping Centre. So Corey McKerner rings up. I want to sign me to yeah. today. Glenn Archer rings up. Whatever it was, you know. That, so that, you just had your first sign. Wayne yeah, Carey was yeah. it? Was that oh, your first client? No, the first client was um, uh, uh, Ma, uh, Mick O'Dwyer at uh, St Kilda. Oh yeah. yeah. And, um, the Kerry oh, was a, you were there. Yeah, yeah, what it was was um, then the lady approached me. It was sort of like, yeah, it took off because of the publicity a bit and because and I was against the AFL. Yeah. Um, the big one was Foxtel. They uh, they just started. And people don't realise, uh, Optus had the TV rights to the mm-hmm. AFL, but Foxtel, because they signed Club 10, my star players, they were going around knocking on doors, oh, we've got Wayne Carey, we've got Gary Abbott. So people just assumed they had the AFL, but they didn't. Yeah. So back in those days, the sort of, you know, they paid me a million dollars. A million dollars to sign the ten players up, so they got a, a ninety grand each or whatever, and yeah. I was about the same. Yeah. And um, my to ten was big back then, uh, yeah. those sort of ones. Uh, but you know the characters in those, those days, you know the the ablets and that the characters. Tony mm, Lockett. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, mean, I was the luckiest bloke ever, blessed on the you know what, because I, I was so such a shit footballer. I played at three clubs, <laughs> which made gave me access to three or well, two great clubs, yeah. Hawthorne and. Or you'd argue St Kilda when I left though was in pretty good shape. You know, Lockett, mm-hmm. Low, yeah. Harvey, yeah, so Burke. And we played a final. At, it's the most watched game on Fox Footy, believe it or not. Geelong St Kilda for elimination final when Lockett kicked ten and Billy Brandless kicked nine. I think. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I was I was just lucky to be in an era that you know, and it was all about connections. And as I said, mm. John Elliott and people like that. Was anyone me. else doing it? Like the management? I'm well, sure Craig Kelly. Managers. Craig Kelly. You know, and I get on great with Craig. He um, he sort of started after I started, but yeah. copied. Well, I shouldn't say copied. You know, it's not like you copyright yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. And you know, he did a great job and runs yeah. a great business and been going for a long time. But probably I was just lucky that I captured the big names uh, yeah. first. And um, you know, some players who don't get a lot of credit, but someone like Simon Black in Brisbane, I rate right mm-hmm. up there and probably uh, arguably the ten best players of all times. And now you go, oh, I don't know about that. But if he played at Collingwood mm-hmm. yeah. or Carlton. Simon Black would be talked about like Diesel he Williams. Was a champion, oh, he was. He was a superstar. Absolute star. Yeah. yeah, and just an absolute ripper bloke. Always rings up chicken now, are you? And yeah. that's probably one of the things I've learnt through, you know, difficult times. Is, you know, someone like Sam Newman, you know, rings up Rick. You know, you might have stuffed up, and I mightn't agree with what you did, but you're going to find out who your true friends are. Course, and there's some people that. who I'm not going to name because it doesn't achieve nah, anything. Course, yeah. Who now ring me ten years mm-hmm. later? Oh, we must catch up. And I'm thinking, hang on, you didn't ring me ten years yeah. ago. But you know, Eddie McGuire's life, Eddie McGuire's been always very good to me. Yeah. Rex Hunt, you know, oh, Rex is a, a different cat, and I love, I love him. him. And he, but he's always rung to see how I am and everything else. Mm, yeah. yeah. 
as you said, man, like uh, hard times, you know, like your true friends come out, man. Yeah, they and they're do. the ones who stick by, you know. Yeah, and, and look, the rest yeah. are just acquaintances, you know. They come, yeah. they come and go. Yeah. And people think I'm critical of the media. I'm not critical. I'm critical of certain people in the media. And look, some people do a great job in the media. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Eddie McGuire's have done a great job with Sam Newman. They're part of the media, yeah, and I've been part of the media on Triple M and <laughs> other things as yeah. well. But you know, it's at the stage where. It's you were part of the media last week too. Yeah, yeah. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> part of my elbow in some of the sport. Um, yeah, but you know, to do what they did last week, something's got to give and it has, and I'm not yeah. going to breach some confidentiality here, no, but no, let's just say they're on notice the media. And yeah, um, yeah. I think people are you know, starting to realise from the support I've had has been unbelievable. In Queensland, you know, northern Queensland, you wouldn't think that people up there yeah. would even know what happened last week. Oh, yeah. I know, these ladies like Ricky, this is a disgrace how yeah. they harass you and, you know, it's got to stop. And I think, gee, it's turned around, hasn't it? Um, yeah. Where 10 Crazy. years ago it was all, you know, you got to go to jail and this yeah. and that and everything mm-hmm. else. What, what do you think has been from your time as a player to a player agent to now with regards to the media, what do you think has changed? What do they need to work on and what, what are they doing just so poorly at the moment? I think the biggest thing that lacking in, in all sports to some degree, or it doesn't seem to happen in America, is they allow you to be who you are. Mm. Here they don't. Mm. They don't mm. allow Patrick Cripps to say what he thinks of being suspended for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole character, like the Warwick Kaffers don't exist, the Mark Jacksons don't exist, you know, some of the greatest characters of all time, yeah. but even a Doug Hawkins. You know, 100%. great character, and yeah. um, you know, uh, and all of them are pretty, you know, my best mates sort of thing. Yeah. And yeah. It, you just don't have that uh, ability to be able to speak your mind these days. No. And, and no. trouble is, the internet's created a twenty-four hour, you know, situation mm-hmm. where it's the next story, the next story, the next story. And 100%. the valuable lesson I learnt was um, one of my great friends, and he's no longer with us. Was so sad. Is Michael Gudinski? And yep. yeah, I remember when the shit hit the fan. Um, he said, "Look, whatever you do, don't respond to anything. Don't." Don't admit to anything, let alone respond to it. What did I do for four years? Respond every time and they'd be out the front. And I know there's been some, you know, an AFL coach in trouble a while ago who rang me and I just said, mate, just whatever you do, don't say anything. It'll go away in 48 hours. And that's the difference. It lasted four years in 2011. Yeah. In 2022, it lasts 48 hours and it goes away. Because the next thing's coming up. That's right. The next thing's coming up. Yep. The next thing's coming up. You're absolutely right, man. And and you're right, like... well, quickly, that incident last week, now that we talk about it, I was saying to friends, like, if that happened to just a normal person, yeah. like, if you're walking down the street and someone's standing next to you, you'd be going, man, well, what are you doing? But yeah. since it's the media, it, it seems there's two different rules for... Oh, for and look, they don't come out and say he's been charged with, make a big deal. They don't stand outside his house and yeah, say, now yeah. you've been charged with nah. assault, you know, what's the story? Yeah. It's funny how it's things a, come yeah. around. I, but people now realise that, you know, yeah, they, they, so. they actually yeah. have no credibility, some media whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I, I don't have to live my life worrying about them, that's for nah, sure. No, exactly right. You know, exactly it's, right. Everyone, you know, if they've done what, they've created that, Discredited yeah, themselves. 100%, 100%. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. As a as a player agent, and even just sort of through business and you personally, what do you think have been sort of the toughest times for you as a business person with regards to your player agency as well, and and just personally as well, and how have you sort of planned to get through that, and how you yeah. find yourself now? Oh, look, one of the probably you know, one of my big faults, and it's not going to change, is my personality is, is I'm an adrenaline junkie, and I've got to go, 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 hundred miles an hour all the time, and I've got better at sort of, but not never going to be perfect. Um, Who is? is yeah, no, no, but back no. in the day, you know, I had a private uh, line at home in my bedroom, a hand line, you know, that was only for players, and it would ring at two in the, the morning, phone. three in the morning. Yeah, the, the bat phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> we got one of those in the studio. <laughs> well, my missus would grab it all the time and hang it up like that. Um, oh, because they'd be really yeah, constantly. But I was yeah. working seven days a week, 15-hour days, you know, yeah. just on adrenaline, because it was yeah. so exciting and... You know, like yeah, I'm doing deals for Wayne Carey of a quarter of a million dollars at Nike. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the players these days are getting forty grand. Yeah. Um, you know, doing deals with and this well, is in those days. And people say to me, "Oh, you would have done a hundred deals where you breached the salary." I didn't at all cheat the. Uh, well, I wouldn't use the word cheat. Didn't break the rules of the AFL. I was just mm. clever on how I structured it. I suppose. So, yeah. for example, registering a player's domain name. You know, yes. waynecarey.com.au and selling it to North Melbourne for 500 grand. There was nothing yeah. wrong with that That's until right. the AFL said, you can't do that. And I said, yeah. well, listen, I haven't broken the rule. Oh, we've, oh, we've got a new rule we're bringing oh, in next year. Yeah. So they bring in my next year, then I create something else. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, was, that's a good player agent, let's be serious. Yeah, yeah. look, it was exciting times, but back then too, you know, we, 
I remember the, I tried this show with Triple M and Foxtel, Pig Jimmy and Rue Boy, which yeah, was yeah, one period, and it was huge. You can't do that these days with no. Dustin Martin and some of that because no. the clubs are doing their own, you know, stuff. And I mean, we us we're doing this now on YouTube. Yeah, you know? yeah, they they right. didn't exist back in those that's days. Right. So, so it was exciting times, and it's not as exciting now, that's for sure. Yeah. And there's so many people in play on agency that. I do a player agent course that sells out every year. I was the first yeah. person in the world to create an online yes. sports agent course. Right. It's been going for 25 years. Is that years. still going, is it? Yeah, yeah, I do it once a year, usually in January, but I'm getting a lot of people on my back. But what I push now is a lot come because they wanted to be an AFLW manager or AFL manager. Okay, no. Focus on a kid going to America in basketball or a soccer player in the UK. You only need two of them and you'll make more money than having 150 AFL players. So the, this challenge that the um, AFL faces is there's a massive surge in soccer and basketball in yeah. young kids, particularly yeah. out in the western suburbs in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the AFL, if they don't tidy up their game soon and start listening, um, they've got to stop kicking backwards and handballing mm-hmm. around in circles somehow. And the yeah. only way I can see you can do it is if it's got to be play on if you kick backwards or no kicking backwards. So if you think about it, if you, kick, if you don't, can't kick backwards, you've got to kick it to a contest. And then also you've got to kick it quickly. So the people in the midfield can't get back and create this zoning off yep. situation. So it should be play on if they... Play, well, I think there should be no kicking backwards. You can't stop uh, handballing backwards. It's too hard to probably uh, stop. Course, but yeah. The handballs are only going a short distance. But the frustration from supporters this year that I get all the time is we're sick of this handball, 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 handball. You know, go around. You watch the play on the weekend. It was just get the ball, go like that, yeah. go like that. Yeah. So I go forward to the one-on-one yeah. contest. Yeah. Um, but the, the coaches, I think, need to hold some responsibility in all this, or in the rule makers as well. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I suppose with the coaches, they're only doing what they need to do to win the game. So no, they'll, they'll manipulate the agree rules. With that. Yep. Yeah, so they're but I team. haven't seen a player, the uh, coach of the York of Damien Hardwick or Alistair Clarkson say, maybe it's time we sit down with the AFL and think, how can we make this game attractive yeah. in 10 years' time to a 10-year-old kid? Because I'm mm-hmm. telling you now, the registration numbers in soccer and basketball are going through the roof. Mm-hmm. But as a coach, right, like at the moment you're coaching AFL, is it your job... To win the game, or is it your job now to worry about how the AFL looks in, in 10 years? And I know you oh, say... No, well, you're right, it's to win the yeah, game. Yeah, and that's course, the problem, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and then maybe later on yeah, when they're yeah, out of the game, yeah. but then probably no one's listening to them, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah a, I, I just think that there's, you know, it sounds simple, but just no kicking backwards isn't a hard rule to break. Yeah. And I think most people would agree mm-hmm. that it's probably a no-brainer. And we get a lot more running through the centre of the ground and kicking to a more one-on-one contest. And do those contests when we used to watch, you know, oh, those? Well, you think of the, like, arguably, look, the best player of all time, and people may disagree, is Wayne Carey, in my view, from Why consistency. Yeah. But Gary Ablett Sr. is the most freakish player I've ever seen. And if I had 10 tickets, I'd probably use them all on Gary. So yeah. Wayne wouldn't like that, but anyway. Um, but why, why, are they, why, are those two, yeah, why are those two? And maybe Tony Lockett's not far behind him because mm-hmm. they were one-on-one contests yeah. and they used to win those brutal contests or take big marks or kick freakish goals. or you know. And look, that's the other thing that I was absolutely blessed with is um, playing in the Euro with Carlton, then going to St Kilda and having Lockett, Winmar and all them. Mm-hmm. And then for going to Hawthorne where, yeah, they were probably finished nice. at the end of an era, but Brett yeah, and yeah. Dunst or... Johnny Platten, who's a ripper friend of mine, had yeah. similar hair to me back in the day. You went to Carm in 83, was it? Oh, I actually went there in 80, I think, or 81. Mm. I've been As trying a... to find out as an under-19. Oh, yeah. Under-19. Uh, yeah. And, um, that they was... win 81, 82, you're thinking, this is the best. Oh, yeah. Man. Look yeah. where I am. You well, actually... all four in 92, they just win the premiership. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually a story that's never been told is that I got picked for my first game at Carlton in, in 82 or 3, I can't remember, and it rained the night before, and my parents had come down from Benio to watch me play right. my first game, and um, David Parkin said, oh, we've decided not to play you. Oh. And I've gone, what? So that was one of the great disappointments of my life, I mean, when you get selected. Yeah, 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 because I was so skinny and athletic, I suppose, it was uh, uh, the rain put you out. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't happen these days. No, no, it wouldn't. No, they, nah. they, pick, they pick the smaller bloke these yeah. days. Um, yeah. Back to sort of your your player agent days and your agent days, your, and I've heard some interviews before, your biggest client was actually not a football player. Oh, uh, yeah, Clinton Grivers. Yeah. Who's 
he well, was I mean, when my, I say as, as a yeah. commentator, he was probably him and Rex Hunt oh. together. They were my yeah. favourite. Yeah. Yeah. They favorite were just calls. an awesome combination because yeah. Um, yeah. Clint was just absolutely, I don't know, spot on with everything and, yeah. and just a great caller. And Rex was lunatic. Yeah, um, yin and Yang. And, yeah, and yang. They, they were perfect <laughs> combination. And Clint was just a, just a ripper bloke. It was one of the saddest days, unfortunately. You know, 32 years of age. And, yeah. It's a bit like I suppose Shane Warne was a good friend of mine yeah. too, and you yeah. know, hearing that, I, I was, I remember I was sleeping on the sofa here that night, yeah. and uh, because we'd been out or something, and the missus came out, and Shane Warne's dead at four oh. o'clock in the morning, and I went, go back to bed. You know, that's then when it was, and mm. geez, the amount of people we've lost, and not not just high profile achievers, but friends in society the last twelve months, oh. is, yeah, it's shattering. And Olivia Newton John, you know, she just yeah. she just passed away. Yeah, yeah. Billy yeah. Picking, you know, what two was the, you and Clinton? Now. How did your relationship sort of start, and how did you sort of build him up into into what he became? Well, what it was is um, uh, a good friend of mine. She uh, she actually said, "You got to look at this guy on the ABC calling yep. the basketball. I think it was or soccer. I can't mm-hmm. remember." And he was earning thirty grand. And I said to him famously, "I'll get you three hundred grand within two years." He goes, three hundred grand." I go, "Yeah, within six months." I had him on a million dollars. Sheesh. So that was a combination of three AW. And what it was was Foxhill had just started, right? And he was the face of Foxtel. He had his own show. People wouldn't even remember that. And. Mm-hmm. Uh, you weren't even born. Um, no, well, I was not in. Yeah, it was about ninety. <laughs> I would have we been couldn't afford pay TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, we couldn't afford yeah. it. Well, people better get used to it because you're going to have to pay to watch AFL. Yeah, going forward. Right, yeah, you don't have to pay. Well, to I do possible. anyway now. Yeah. yeah so yeah, Clinton was um, uh, famously you guys signed him then, and he was my biggest client in respect that he was paying me. That like, yeah. I was twenty percent of a million dollars. He's yeah. a lot more than Wayne Carey paying me three percent of a million dollars. Yeah. Sort of thing, so, yeah. Um, oh, it was all tax deductible, so it's actually it's not like you, you're yeah. losing that money, I suppose. Yeah. But I, I think anyone would accept if you if you're getting eight hundred thousand a year, uh, sort of thing. It's not bad money yeah, back in those days. Definitely. It's probably the equivalent of four million or something. I reckon it's good money now, just quietly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, that was uh, one of them. And there was a few other things I had to deal with, which you know, with Wayne and with Gary. That you know, I'm yeah. not going to go into. I don't nah, have to get yeah. But you know, that they were. Heartbreaking times for everyone. Mm. Um, and yeah. Well, that's your job too as a play manager. Yeah, you're look, not guess, just getting the money. All of a sudden, yeah. you're almost... You're looking after them, aren't you, in, yeah. in a sense? Because they're ringing you up, aren't they? Oh, yeah, look, I think that's, you know, as I said, it was like adrenaline, you know, doing... I was always... I, I was a bit of a perfectionist, I suppose. And mm. Dane Swan, who's a good friend of mine now, he sort of... Do you have to always keep organising this and ringing this yeah. and doing this? And, like, he's, I know why he's having a gummy, but that's just me. Yeah. You know, mate, you've got to be here at this time, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Yeah. Know, but, you know, some people like to be organised and, and others like to just do the show. And, yes. You know, Dane's a ripper bloke and, you know, he's probably no more popular... Uh, past player than Dane, but um, oh, yeah, the days honestly. have changed in that management side of things. I think of the days of it, it, finding an, a Wayne Carey don't exist anymore no, at the no. moment. Um, yeah, I think Dusty's almost the last of that, you know, a high achieving in big games yeah. sort of player. Yeah, and even Dustin, who who I managed, so I found him when he was seventeen up yeah. up in Benio and Benio Pioneers, and um, great story. Ray Byrne, who played at Carlton. Um, he was a great friend of mine and used to help me because he was at Geelong um, and he would say this player Rick and you know I've had a few other players do that uh, so ex-players Carlton players in, uh, in fact um, tipped me into players he rang up one day and he said Rick I know you get this all the time I've got the next Wayne Carey I've got oh here we go <laughs> he goes yeah he's got to come and watch his Dustin Martin kid and I said oh, I haven't got time mate and he goes no no seriously you've got to come up alright so I get up to the game it's been going for a minute and a half I've run out in the ground with a pad and said <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, he, he was unique. He, he was uh, every play that came, he was doing. his step. He doesn't do it as much now. He's sort no, of no, pushing no, off. So, yeah. But it, I don't know. He that was, was just, from the start. He was yeah, from the that. start, he was doing wow. that. It was something that he learnt very early in his his days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's. Um, but Dustin, I know he just doesn't like the attention um, no. and, and football. He just likes to play football. And, and look, Gary Ablett Senior is like that, and each to their yeah. own. Um, I don't mm-hmm. blame them at all because. Sometimes some people love, not love the attention, but just can ride with it each yeah, day. Of course, um, of course. But yeah, others don't. And I remember Gary Abbott Senior once said, I want to see you, Rick, and want to go, geez, that might be coming for me, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be coming for someone else, I reckon. <laughs> just, I hope you got the audio on. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Gary Abbott said, one day, Rick, I want to talk to you about something. I said, well, what about it? He goes, I want to take you out fishing. So I went out fishing, I said, Rick, stop ringing me up and asking me to do the footy show. They were offering him 150 grand back a in the show. Uh, yeah, no, uh, 150 grand for a 12 month contract oh, yeah, back in um, the uh, late 90s, I think. Yeah, yeah. When and that it was, was like, right at its oh, peak. Most players were getting um, 
about a thousand dollars a show sort of thing. So yeah. twenty grand a year, you know, yeah. not even that, probably ten grand. Well, you never heard much of Gary Ablett. No, so well, Gary you... said though, and I'll never forget this. He said, "Rick, do you ever think I don't want to be like everyone else?" Yeah. And I said, "What do you mean by that?" He goes, "Well, just because everybody else wants to be on the footy show, Jason yeah. doesn't like Gary. Tony Lockett and I don't." And it's true, those two, yeah, the greatest true. footballers, uh, full forwards of all time, probably, yep. um, they, they don't like all that side of it. Yep. And it's each to their own, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. Some, a lot of players do slink into a very quiet life after football. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I feel for, you know, what the social media now does to mm. families. I always say, don't focus on Ben Cousins, say, at the top. Focus on Dad, Mum. Well, it's coming down. So, yeah, because they're though. going through the suffering, and that's what my 100%. kids... You know, my youngest Mitch went through a terrible time, and yeah. you know I can't change it. No, I can only try yeah. and help him be the best he can be now. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, um, media, social media is going to destroy a lot more lives than just Hundreds, sports yeah. people. Um, mm. You know, a friend of mine's daughter in year twelve, you know, went to an end of year party. This was ten years ago when social media had started. Kissed a boy. Two other girls said she was a d -d 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 yeah. so she was in hospital yeah. for six months. Yeah, that's social media. Because that's she that's couldn't right. she couldn't go to school each day because of what she was being called and that, you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just terrible. And I mean I'm a big advocate, isn't I making this statement on your show. Yeah. Is we've got to bring in actual personal identity on social media. Yeah. You can't just have this fake name and yeah. fake you see it and a lot. if you, you, you a lot. if you bully or you do anything, you get suspended for a month, you get suspended for three months, then you get blocked for life. Hundred percent. You know? Hundred percent. It's these keyboard warriors man. They can oh. get on there and yeah. they can say whatever they want yeah. and that no accountability, you no. know? Yeah. So that's a well, thing. the best one is when they, they take the moral high ground on these yeah. things and you don't ever know who they are. It's <laughs> like, right. you know, you're saying yeah. you, you, you and you were bad and then, right. well, who, who are you? There's yeah. a, these yeah. anonymous accounts yeah. and all that. It's just, it's chaotic. Well, I was on Twitter and I got off, I was sort of fairly popular on there, but um, uh, just because someone you'd block, mm -hmm. they'd set up an account in 30 seconds, another one, yeah, exactly. about, and it'd be a fake name, Bill Smith or something. You go, yeah. why do you even bother? And I thought, yeah. you know what? Facebook's the one for me because, you know, I can engage with local footy clubs. Twitter's yes. just a bound opinion. It is. And everyone, it is, it is everyone's really. got one these days. And I have, you have, we all yeah, have. Well, I've got opinion. You know, yeah. oh. Twitter's such it's, a... You know what's... I don't, I don't know if you, sort of how you deal with it and all that, but, like, I'm sort of on social media for, for the Jabba Punch, for work yeah, and yeah. for other things as well, for Carlton, but I find that this is weird. Like, you can have 100 comments, 99 of them are fantastic. Yeah. Love your chicken, love your Paul, yeah, love your Rocco. Yeah. And it's that one little yeah, comment... Right. That you focus on is like, yeah. you bloody, yeah. you bloody bastard. I did that last night. There was a comment. Yeah. I looked at it and I go, what are you talking? And I was yeah. about to answer it and I go, you know what? Just leave it, man. Just I've sort of it. got... 90% better than uh, back in the day. I used to fire back at all of them, <laughs> and then last week with this Seb Costello stuff and all that. Um, you're right, there's like there was like 3,000 comments of support yeah. and one person yeah, that's a with, a, with a yeah. fake profile pic and everything else going, You're nothing but a this Nixon, and, 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 and I'm like, Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> but that's your personality, you know. Sometimes exactly. you know, exactly. don't, don't uh, react like a guy, a, a good mate said, Why do you keep reacting like that? and I said, Well, I'll tell you why. Because if 15 years ago you get put through what I do, it's cost me $15 million and my family and my life, and yes, yeah. I am able to blame to some respect for it, is that when I get challenged by the media, I'm going to react. Yeah, and they 100%. know that's the next story. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, it's, um, I've got better at it, but, uh, you know, as I said, payback's coming next year when um, yeah. hopefully some people get shown up for exactly what they are and there's a certain yeah, female it. journalist in football who <laughs> might regret yes. a few things she's done. Like. <laughs> whose, name, whose name shall not be named. No, it's like Lord Voldemort from, from Harry Potter. Yeah. I'm not going to name it. But just, how, just, how have you, like from, from then till now, how have you how are you going yourself personally? What, yeah. what have you put in place for, for yourself to sort of make sure, not to make sure that, because I mean, I, I love to go by the same... He's without seeing yeah. cast the first stone. Well, I'm really? very lucky in respect to Jude, my ex-wife's just superstar, you know. Right. Yeah. She's, she's been yeah. the rock for Gibraltar for my two sons and for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. She knows I'm a bit different. They know I'm a bit different. Yeah. But my sons have been great. And um, mm -hmm. my new partner, I'm not new, I've been with her for five years, Melissa, she's just a superstar. Yeah. You know, she said, in fact, last night, I swear this is true, she was sitting there, I was sitting here, and she goes, now, when Sam Newman... His wife, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, yeah. took over his social media accounts. He stopped firing back and said, I'm taking over your social oh. media accounts. <laughs> and I've gone, oh, geez. all right, you can do yeah, it, you can yeah, do it. it. Yeah, I just yeah. hope she doesn't see this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but she's been fantastic, Melissa. And, and look, I've never met a girl who's liked by other girls so much. It's usually jealousy or, you know, everything yeah. else. But I don't know, she's, um, yeah, she's with That's chalk good. and cheese. She can cook, I can't. She knows but nothing about football. I pretend I do. Um, 
Um, yeah, she's the best. No, that's good. That's so, good. You say that the others have, you know, helped you along, but you've got to take some credit for, for your own, you know, for, for your I, own. I think that, um, you know, a lot of people say, it's only been of recent times, like people talk about Club 10, I never used to think about it at all, yeah. or how yeah, good was Wayne Carey? I don't know, he's just, just a client, you know? Yeah. So I think mean, as you get older, you probably reflect a bit, but yeah. sometimes I'm not big on, you know, sort of talking about myself, I suppose. Yeah, it's course, as yeah. in just, yeah, I'm proud of not so much what I achieved, but what I guess everyone put together achieved mm-hmm. as a group. Yeah. Like you look over there, there's a photo of all sorts of players. You know, yeah. Matthew Richardson, one of my best friends, Jason Dunstall, you know, I reckon that the most underrated That photo with the four Carey, uh, yeah, yeah. Carey yeah. Well, yeah, That Ablett photo Lockett. is an amazing. Carey, Ablett, Dunstall, Lockett. You'll never see four players like that ever again. No. And um, yeah, that, that actual photo, I got the boys to sign one and we gave one to the Royal Children's Hospital and they got, I think, about 10 grand for it. Yeah. And we gave, I gave one to Neil Danaher. Um, oh, they they, okay, uh, they yeah. sold it. At, I don't know how much they got for it, but, uh, um, but Neil's just a ripper. You know, how, how wouldn't you have Neil Danaher? Mate, that bloke there, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget, I played on him at Windy Hill one day, and in the first 30 seconds, I fluked a goal, must have got a handball over the top of the goal square, and he's, he was on me, and he's come up, and he's gone, bang, in my back. And I've gone, he goes, don't start doing that shit, Nixon, all right? And I went, all right, and I kicked another three. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's just a great bloke. That, that, that was another era, you know, of, of players mm. like that, you know, at yeah. Essendon, even, you know, Roger Merritt and those sort of guys, mm. you know, playing back in those days. Yeah, Mark 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah, those days there, anyway, I can't. We're, I'm kind of the same yeah. milk as you, you know, like, uh, yeah, the 80s, man. Everyone knows on the show, I always talk about the old <laughs> days and that. Like, Maybe. I still love my footy. I still yeah. love it, of course I do. But, man, it was just a, it was a magical yeah. time. Yeah. You know the other thing, too? I'll tell you, and you were the play manager, was we as supporters used to see enough of the players, yeah. but not too much, yeah, where yeah, they became... That like magical yep. where now I can watch I can't play 24 hours a day almost yep. you know yep. what I mean and yep. keep an eye on him but those are there when we did used to see him at the ground it was like magical because mm. we never really saw enough of him you know yep. I think it's it's way too much now yeah yeah no I agree and you know I actually saw uh, Bomber Thompson who lives in Port Melbourne yeah um, mm-hmm. you know he's been through a tough time too and yeah, really he pleased got? yeah he is and um I asked him if this guy sent me a book from Perth to sign it and Bomber came down, and we, we had a chat for like an hour out in the street, and I actually was reflecting on what, what you're just saying. Yeah. You know, he was talking about the good times and everything else, and you go, if it, in fact, it's, I'm not here to make uh, tips to people, but I quickly will, because I talk about this every Saturday night. If you've made a mistake, or you're down and out, or you're struggling, or whatever else, or you've got an addiction, it doesn't matter, yeah. is my grandmother taught me this lesson, and that is, go back to your teenage years and do what you did then. Go and buy a can of Fanta. Go and have a Sunny Boy. Go and do things, and when I say it, people start smiling. Play ABBA on your on your music, yeah. you know. Do all that, and people in the crowd go, "You're right, yeah." Go back, and then okay. you suddenly your mind goes from, "I can't get out of bed the next day, I've stuffed up or whatever else." Get on with it by reflecting on your teenage years because they were your best simple, years and simple times, you know. And just yeah, and what also little... does work, and she was spot on, my grandmother. Is I used to do a paper round in Bendigo, get up at five o'clock every morning. She said, get up at five o'clock every morning. Your body, when it matured, loves you getting up at five o'clock. And she's right. If I mm. sleep into eight or nine, I feel like shit all day. Yeah. Yeah. If I get up at five, I fucking just want to yeah, take everyone on. I know it's hard to get up, but once you're up, man, yeah. like, yeah, that's yeah. it, 100%, man. That's yeah, and cool. everyone's different. You know, we're all, we're all lucky or unlucky sometimes. You get your genes mainly yeah. from your grandparents. Yeah. And my, my grandfather was a Davis Cup tennis player and a champion footballer. And, was he? And, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know all this till, till uh, fairly, I, didn't I, I didn't know he played Davis Cup tennis. What happened was he comes from Murrayville, which is sort of up towards Mildura. And I went up there to help a lady with cancer, raise some money. And um, I got there and I didn't even know he was from Murrayville. I knew he was, I thought he was from Swan Hill or Mildura when, you know. And yeah. they, they actually have a street named after him and a statue wow. in the park of him. And I've got, oh, shit, I think I know where the jeans come wow. from now. Yeah, and he was like tall, skinny, athletic. Sort he played of, Davis like, Cup. He played Davis That's Cup unreal. tennis. Yeah. yeah. Can you play tennis? Sorry? No, I can't. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> What's Bill your Murphy. What was your yeah. grandfather's name? Bill Murphy. Bill Murphy. Yeah. Bill Murphy. Yeah. Bill Murphy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to research that. Murphy. Yeah, we're going to have to research yeah. that. Yeah, research that. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So yeah. what are you, uh, what's what's on now? What are you up to now? Oh, well, I run now. Uh, came up with this idea. People think it was a smarter idea than the player management, which is <laughs> which was four weeks before COVID. I came up with the idea of a mobile health business. Go out oh, yes, to yeah. businesses yes, and yes, do yes. health checks. And I was very lucky that... 
uh, got introduced by Athel Hodgetts, who's a car used to work at Carlton. Oh, yep. Introduced me to Jim Green, who's a, uh, used to own the Ivy Nightclub, and a lot of people watching this. Oh, the Ivy Nightclub. Anyway, yeah. Jim, yeah, Jim, uh, Jim's done very that well. That brought a smile to my face. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, like, he was actually a smart nightclub owner. He used his money to put into property, and um, yeah. well, he was a pharmacist, but built medical centres in Geelong, and yeah. um, hence the connection. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim loved the idea, and you know we got off to a great start. But then COVID stu not stuffed us up. We're in lockdown, yep. and then probably this year, uh, March, from March onwards, we've had our best four or five months. And now, because yep. they told people to work from home again, it's gone a bit quiet. But yeah, um, I know it's going to be. You know, I've had a lot of contacts this week. In fact, I thought of the idea three years ago. I went to Keysborough Golf Club, and I said, "What if you actually your members um, before they play it, once a year get a health check?" And it's part of their membership package. Yeah, and the CEO right. goes, that's a great idea, Ricky. Yep, yep. And then sure enough, two weeks ago, I'd forgotten all about it a bit because of lockdown. Yep. This lady rang and said, oh, Rick, we're doing a charity golf day at Albert Park. Could you, could, could you do a health check or something? And because of the back of what happened with Shane Warne, I've created yeah. a five-minute cardiac assessment. Mm -hmm. So that cardiac assessment takes five minutes, right? Yeah. So but at least you know if you've got a, a pre-existing problem. Mm -hmm. wow. And we mightn't lose as many people. And I said, what we can do is they can play nine holes, and then the four people who come off the ninth hole, five minutes, test the four of them, straight onto the tenth hole. Anyway, in the space of four weeks, Fraser Gehrig's organised a charity golf day. I'm doing that in, at Q Golf Club in uh, two weeks as well. Yep. Picked up four golf days. Nice. So, and I think it's a no-brainer for lawn, lawn bowls. Go down to yeah. a lawn bowls club yeah, yeah, yeah. Right before idea. you play or after you play, doesn't matter, as long as you haven't been drinking. Yeah. Um, wow. which, well, that's the, prob that's the um, problem with the lawn bowl. I won't be able to do it at the Port Melbourne Bowl. <laughs> like with Jesse Tubman and all the boys yeah. up there. But, um, yeah, some characters get there, I'll tell you. But uh, yeah, someone motivated on the Clinton Drivers, Shane Warren, yeah. uh, good friends, but not just that, people who have passed it, you know, just been relatives and that, but they didn't know they had a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I've even, I, I don't, like we found a 22 year old kid, we do laser skin checks. Yeah. He had a melanoma, he was going to be dead in 12 months and my nurse panicked when we first, and we took him straight to the hospital, cut oh, it out and I'll never forget his mum rang crying, oh Ricky you've saved my son's life. I said, I haven't saved your son's life, Racing Victoria who were paying me, yeah, yeah, yeah. they saved your son's life. Um, and yeah, what 22 year old kid gets a skin check? I mean I've only got, no, I only no, had no, my first one when I was probably 50. Yeah, and, 100%. Um, I know some. Now I'm going to go get one. There you got to be yeah. worried. Oh. Yeah, well, it's, I, I hope that's if I achieve one person, you know, from this golf day next week, no, true. one person finding true. out their blood pressure and their cholesterol levels too high, well, we've achieved something. No, no, true. That's no, not no. a money spinner for me. Yes, you want to be successful, but of I've course. never been about money. It's just about achieving, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. You know, no. trying to help people. No, 100%. Because man. a lot of people help me, and I see it that I'm paying it back by. Helping the them payback, of course. Yeah, no, no, I yeah. agree. It was all yeah, comes no, back no. around one eighty. In fact, I'm talking to the Carlton Business Club about you know, a similar thing, yep. where we might join the club and also um, offer health checks yeah. to the Carlton business. business. Carlton Is it, business, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, Rob Duncan, who runs that, he had a good chat to me. He was mm. great. Brian Cook's one of my better mates. He lives in Port Melbourne now. Yep. Actually, I struck it lucky this year. Diesel Williams, who I grew up with and taught him how to play. He, um, he's a yeah, taught him how to play. <laughs> 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 you can see how he chucked that in. I it. I well, the thing I hate about Diesel is I used to win the hardball all the time. I'd handball out to him. He'd run down the wing, have three bounces and kick a goal and get all the praise. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, but never used to win the hardball. <laughs> and then um, Michael Voss probably was my oh. most successful client almost, achievement-wise, you know, yeah. with three premierships mm. and Brownlows. And, yeah. and I didn't win the Norm Smith, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bossy, a great mate of mine, and I was disappointed when he first coached, and I was so rapid he got another chance. And I think yeah. he's, I've said for 20 years to Carlton, what you lack is presence. You don't have people in positions with presence. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? We've got Diesel Williams, the footy director, Brian Cook, the best administrator in AFL history, yep. and Michael Voss now as yep. the coach, and even Aaron Hamill and people like that. We've got yeah. presence. Yeah. Neil Barm walks into Geelong, guess what, he's got presence, they win a flag, goes yeah. to Collingwood, win a flag, go to Richmond, he wins three flags. 100%. It's not it's not fluke. You yeah, know, no, you've no, got no, to have no. people with presence. hundred percent. You've got to have those. Because the young players jump over that. Patrick Cripps, I know, said to a friend of mine at a restaurant, when Vossie walked in, he just, you know, went like yeah, that. Yeah. And, and that's what happens, you know. And that's not discrediting people who have coached there before. Of course. Sometimes our assistant coaches come into the role of senior coach because they've been at a successful club, but they're actually just really good at what they were doing there which yep. is the assistant role, which I see as not... Those words, assistant coach, should be player manager. They're yep. good at yep. knowing that Trent Cotchin's different to Dustin Martin and Damien yep. Hardwick's done it really mm. well. Dusty might concentrate for three minutes in a team meeting, but Koch will concentrate for three hours, and yeah. that's just your personality. And that know? makes a good 
yeah. coach or yeah. manager and that where you, because each person is it's different. different. Yep. Yeah, yep. and you can't like one needs a good smack yep. across the head, the yep. other one has to be cuddled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've always uh, said, you know, what's the difference between if, if there was a brick wall and a football on the other side, and Wayne Carey and James Hurd, who'd get there first? The answer is they both get there at the same time. Okay. Kerry had knocked the brick wall over and James would have yeah. his way around. Yeah, he'd walk around. <laughs> so, yeah. I've always, when I was managing players, That's there's true. some that I didn't agree with perhaps the way they went about things and everything else, but, you know, everyone's different. Yeah. So my job was to get the best out of them on the footy field and off the field. Yeah. It wasn't to make them, you know, the smartest person or the, you know, shouldn't comment, like... With Jake and Jason Akamanis on the weekend, you know he was hilarious, yeah. but he just speaks his mind, and he doesn't, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what he says, and people exactly. know he's like that, and you know, yeah. it was, it's interesting to hear someone like that when today's robots yeah. say nothing. Oh, I love, I love so, Akamanis. Yeah, no, man, he mate. was, he was oh. fantastic, mate. And as you said, some people hate him, you know, what yeah. I mean, because what he says, but. Yeah. I reckon a lot of people love him yeah, for what he says. The crowd, you know, loved him on the weekend. Yeah, yeah he was 100%. fantastic. Yeah, and I was with Stephen Milne as well, and he, he's a pretty he's massive character. Yeah, he yeah, was, was really good. He's a great guy, Milne. Yeah. yeah. Where do you see the the Blues now? Given this is a, a Carlton centric show, have they <laughs> have they overachieved? Have they underachieved? Have they hit the hit the mark? Is finals well? Like, yeah. And this is what I was big on: Harry Mackay coming out and saying that if they don't make finals, the year's still. A success. I don't believe that. No, I, I don't believe that. I, 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 I predicted list. five years ago they'd be in contention in 2022 onwards. Yep. So I'm not far off. I picked Did them you put that out there? Yeah. Put, I also, in March, Did my predictions, I had um, Carlton sixth. Now, yeah, I think we all... It's looking good. I think they, <laughs> they smack a little bit of St Kilda at the moment. They, they actually need someone to stand up and go, no, we're not going this way again. And yeah. someone has to do that this weekend. Who's it going to be? You know, who's it going to be in that team that says... Is it going to be Sam Walsh? We all know he's a great player, or something yeah. like that. He's got to go. You know what? I'm going to kick three goals this bloody game. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bust through a pack. I'm going to kick a goal, and I'm just going to go back to the centre and go. Now yeah. let's get going, boys. Stop this bullshit. So look, they're on the right track with their off field now, and they're you yes. know recruiting and everything. Yeah. They they look. They haven't got a lot of depth, I don't think. Um, yeah. Like some clubs. I mean, Geelong is showing this year. Finally, when you put young kids into the midfield, put Dangerfield and Selwood in the grandstand for a few weeks and rest them up, and they're still they're, they're, up. like it's all about the last six games of the yeah. year Managing. these days. It's it not is, it is. as Melbourne are finding out. You can jump out of the blocks and win ten games at the start. Well, of Cameron did the same. Yeah, like we right. jumped out, and now all of a sudden, I think like... one of the things that impact if you have a really good start to the season is fatigue at this time of the year sets mm. in. And the two teams that have managed their players the best, and it's no coincidence, are Geelong and Sydney, Sydney. in my view. And yeah. they'll, they'll be the two that play off, especially if Sydney finish Geelong second today. and they get a home final up there, they're straight into a prelim. So no Carlton. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think no. Carlton, <laughs> I think this week is it's a big game. Oh, I've got yes, two to finish off. But you know what? That's what makes or breaks you as a, a player. And, and you're right. There's going to have to yep. be one yep. or two. Yep. And I think you said Sam Walsh. Sam Walsh, to me, steps up every week, does yeah, what he no, can. I think it's someone like... We need someone like Harry. Yeah, no, I agree. To, I think Kerno really... or Harry Mackay are probably yeah. the two that... It's usually that Ford, like at Richmond a few times, Lynch has pulled, the, pulled it out yeah. when you didn't expect him to. Mm. Yeah. Um, back probably in the premiership years, more Rewalt was doing that, but you yeah. know, he's probably at his end of his career, but he has a great career. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but uh, it just needs some player to stand up and go, I'm not going, no, we're not going I'm this way again. I'm, I'm sick of it, we're going that way. Yeah. Now, Cripps can't do it, he's not playing. Yeah. But you know what? I wouldn't be going, oh, Cripps is out for it. But no, this is an opportunity, opportunity for someone. Opportunity for me. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's, that's what happens. Justin Martin got that opportunity. Yeah, like, yeah, Dusty wasn't, right. couldn't even get a kick the first four years. Yeah. Mm. But then it that's just changed. Right. He matured overnight. Yeah. So I always say this. I don't like the draft being 18-year-olds. It should be 21-year-olds yep. in my okay. view. Because yeah. 18-year-olds can be 14, yeah. they can be 18, or they can be 24. Yeah. And, you know, like Tom Hawkins, Jack Rewalt, their first four years were... No, yeah, good, but well, they, they were boys. And then they became men. Yeah, hundred percent. Carlton really need a few boys to become men. Yeah. That's what they need. Well, we had, in a sense, sticks when he came yeah, over. Yeah. He was like 21, 22, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah he was. And he came over, and he was ready to go. He was ready to go. Yeah, and he was the up. one that used to say, "Mate, yeah. give me that ball. I'm yeah. taking this." He did. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, we and need... that, that's the way Kerry dominated. Yeah, Jones. that's like, right. 100%. Just give me the ball. I'll do the rest. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think that's what some clubs lack these days. They don't have that type of player that says. No, we're not going that way. We're going this way. Yeah. You know, and they do it with their actions on the field. And the actions are usually something powerful. You yes. know, it's a bust out of a pack. Well, well, Petrarca did it last year and did Petrarca it when it counted in the grand year, final. Yeah. 100%. You know, and he's been pretty consistent. And, he's, this year. and, and all, since then he's taken yeah. on, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, like he's really, really hit his straps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, mate.
been an absolute pleasure. Oh, yeah, thank you, boys. Amazing. Thank you very much. Show the Vegas. We got now. We've got the big like, reunion this Thursday. I don't know when this is going to Yeah, no, no. Oh, this will be on next week. But I was going to say, like, you you. You know, like you played your four games for Count, you know. Four like, great games, yeah. Four great yeah. games for Count. <laughs> you're a legend of the AFL and play manager, but now you're a legend of the jumper punch. <laughs> yeah, we're well, going to have to pull well, that, well, that up on Wikipedia. I'm only giving out what I didn't in the eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if Robbie Muir comes along, I'll come show you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, fantastic. Yeah. All right, mate. Yeah, All right, mate. Thanks very no, much. Pleasure. Toot, toot. Toot, toot. Toot, toot. toot. <laughs>